Hey, what's up guys? I'm Steve Wells and today we are going to be talking about the newest shoe in my collection and that is the Mizuno Wave Rider Wave Knit 24. So this shoe is not out quite yet. It's going to be released, I believe, from what I found July 14th. Um, I went on a run in these guys this morning and just wanted to let you know my initial impressions from my first run and kind of compare it to other versions of their shoes that I've run in in the past. So I've done a lot of miles in the Mizuno Wave Rider 22. Never had a 23, but the 22 was actually one of my top picks in 2019 for one of my favorite shoes. And that is really no longer the case. Um, that's more because my preferences have changed, not necessarily because there's anything wrong with either one of these. I just don't like shoes in this category quite as much as I did anymore. So will the Wave Rider 24 be my top road shoe in 2020? Probably not, but it very well could be your top shoe um, because against a lot of other competitors, this one is pretty awesome actually. So between these two, if I just had to choose one, I would say that I actually like the newer one a little bit better. So let's go over some of the differences between these two. So the first thing that I noticed with these new ones is that the wave plate is significantly thinner. So if we take a look, especially at the medial side here, um, it's a lot thinner and doesn't come up quite as high either. Also comparing the two, the length of the wave plate in the newer one seems a little bit shorter. And if you take a look at the bottom, there's a lot less of it exposed on the bottom. So that's because the wave plate is a little bit smaller and there's just a little bit more foam surrounding it in this newer one than there is in the old one. So. I think that that's actually a pretty good thing. I've had lots of stuff stuck in this hole here, rocks and mud and that kind of thing. And I like that doesn't seem like that'll be as big of a problem in this newer version. Now I obviously have the mesh version of the 22 and the knit version of the 24. And that's not because there isn't a mesh or a knit of either one of them. These are just the ones that I happen to have. In general, I do tend to prefer a mesh, even though against a lot of other knits, I do like Mizuno's knit that they use. I just tend to gravitate towards mesh a little bit more. It was pretty warm out when I was running this morning and I didn't notice that my feet were unbearably hot or anything like that in this knit one though. Because of the difference in the wave plates on the medial side um, and because of the thinner wave plate in the newer one, even though these are both neutral shoes, I would say that the newer one does have a little bit less stability attributes than the older one does. Another thing to keep in mind, especially while buying these is that the newer one runs a little bit shorter so you can probably even tell just by me kind of lining them up there um, that the 22 is a little bit longer so my toe comes to about here in the 22 and I'm right out at the end in the 24 I might have even gone a half size up so if we look at the heel counter here it looks like the older one comes up a little bit higher in the back than the newer one does. I don't really care one way or another. Um, either one is fine with me, but just a difference that I noticed there. The new one also has a new foam in the midsole called Energy. So it's a little bit softer than the foam that they used in the older version. The weight difference um, I don't have a scale, I need to get my hands on one, but I was able to find the weights for the mesh version of either one of them. So the knit is probably a little bit heavier than the mesh is I would expect. So the mesh version of the 22 is 10.1 ounces. The mesh version of the 24 is right around eight ounces. So I would expect with the knit instead of the mesh, if you were comparing these two directly, they're, they're probably about the same weight. But if you're comparing knit version to knit version, 
mesh version to mesh version, the newer one is pretty significantly lighter there. So let's get into some pros for this new Wave Rider. So I do like the softer feel that this one has under my foot with that less aggressive wave plate under your heel. It feels a lot less clunky than the old one does, which I really like. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I tend to gravitate towards lower drop shoes, which neither of these are by any means. But the newer one has kind of more of that smoother ride attributes that I tend to like in lower drop shoes more than the older one does. It's just less clunky under your foot, um, a much smoother transition um, in the newer version. Another pro is the volume in the toe box here, something that you don't typically think about too much until it becomes a problem, which for me, it was a bit of a problem in the Wave Inspire. So if you compare the two of these, this one has a much more like slope toe box here. This one goes up a little bit more before it comes back over your foot. And so what that does is it prevents your toe from getting jammed up in the end and hitting the top. So even though these are a little bit short for me, I didn't have any problems in my run this morning um, with my toe feeling like it was hitting the end or getting too crunched up in there. So another pro of this shoe, um, kind of a half pro, is the tongue here. It's a little thinner than what we get in the old Wave Rider or the Wave Inspire. It um, does still have a little bit of padding in it, but not gonna be as much as these other two, which is okay, I think, um, because it does feel like it wraps your foot a little bit more, especially because it is a gusseted tongue instead of just being connected down at the bottom like these two are. It wraps all the way down to the sides. And my last pro is the looks. Um, I think that this shoe looks pretty cool. It's probably one of my favorite looking shoes that I have. Even I had said that I liked the looks of the Wave Inspire, but I think that this one's a little bit cooler just because it's a little more interesting. It's still not too crazy, but has a little bit more going on. And this one here, the 22, is just kind of your ugly old running shoe. But I think the design of this one has improved a lot and I really like the looks of it. So let's talk about some cons. I mentioned in a lot of my videos, a higher drop is a con for me may not be for you. If you like higher drop shoes, you'll probably love this shoe, but that was a problem that I had with it. Also, while I have the tongue under pros, it is a bit of a con. So the stitching that is down beside your feet, I did have a little bit of rubbing on the insides of my feet. So I don't know if that's something that would go away with time and I wouldn't notice as much, or if it's something that would eventually cause blisters, but it is something to keep in mind. So another con, which isn't too huge of a deal, kind of expected it, is that both versions, the knit and the mesh of this shoe are now 130. The rider used to be 120, but they raised the price on that one. The knit has always been 130, so just kind of evening out the two so that people aren't just going for the mesh just because of the price. That's kind of something that we've seen from most companies, the Saucony Ride, the New Balance 880, all going up to that 130 price mark, so kind of same category, just evening out the playing field a little bit there. And my last con is the length. I just wish this one fit a little more similar to that Wave Rider 22 lengthwise. This one's just a tiny bit short for me. The 12 would probably be a little bit too long. So I need like an 11.75 or something like that in these. Um, so if you're kind of on the border, just keep that in mind. Try it on if you can. Maybe order a half size up if you need to. But other than that, I don't have any major cons with this shoe. Um, it's just a good all around medium cushion neutral trainer that you can put lots of miles on. If you're in the Ghost or 880 or something like that, this would definitely be 
worth checking out. So I hope this video has been helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe down below. Leave any questions you have for me in the comments and I will talk to you guys next week.